with that TikTok conversation in mind, <laughs> we got to play that uh, Steve Lacey clip. Oh, yeah. Which was, bruh, oh, man. I thought this was so amazing in the wrong ways. <laughs> The way nobody sang the next verse embarrassing as. Alright, so yeah, man, that, uh, <laughs> but to me, one, we already know, like, TikTok is literally the most extreme version of just hearing. Yeah. snippets of a song right yeah. but we've always had that experience with before tiktok there's plenty of songs that you know that because they were so big and it's not even like your particular bag yeah. but you know the song because it was like an old school song or yeah. it was just a massive pop song in a different genre and you know y'all like oh yeah i know that song you don't know it know it so tiktok puts that out there but hey first of all they're at your show yeah facts. so you still got the bag right yeah. the win is still there <laughs> Every time an artist decides to shut the hell up and put the mic out there, it's a risk. Yeah. Period. I was just at uh, One Music Fest and it was like the, uh, the Jeezy set. And it, it was one of his B-sides. Yeah. And I heard part of the crowd get quiet. Some yeah. people knew it, but it was part of the crowd. Like, <laughs> like, I don't care who you are. There's always the risk there. So, one, hey, bro, it just is what it is. That's, that's a part of the risk that you take when you do that. But... Two, is TikTok ruining music? Do you feel like that goes to TikTok or what? No, nah, I, I think I think that's more of a reflection of just Steve. No, not Steve. Steve's fault, bro. I ain't gonna put it on Steve. <laughs> I ain't gonna do it on Steve, bro. Hey, that wasn't me, nah, bro. Nah, I fuck with this shit. But, <laughs> hey, I'm no, 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 I fuck with you. I was just trying to bait him into something. You know what I'm yeah, <laughs> but I, I think it's more of a reflection of just consumer behavior. You know what I'm saying, like. Yeah. I don't know. I don't want to get too technical into it because I don't feel like I have the, the, the degree to get too technical into it. But, bro, people have kind of evolved to many short attention span people. You know what I'm saying? We all don't pay attention to yeah. things for too long. And that isn't super shocking to me because I feel like if the ringtone era was still around, like, the ringtone era makes me think of that, right? Like, remember that shit, bro? It was yeah, like, you, yeah, bro. you would buy yeah, the yeah. shit because you knew 20 seconds of it. You know what I'm saying? That's then, it. The rest of it started playing. You're like, oh, that's the part where I hang up. So I don't even need to worry about that. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I don't even need to learn the rest of this. So I think, like, I don't know. I think people like looking for something to blame. Because I don't, I don't feel like anything at this point can truly ruin music. Like, music is so big, bro. It would take a very powerful entity. It would be like Drake, Bad Bunny, and Olivia Rodrigo just banding together for the greater evil of society. You know what I'm saying? To bring down the music industry. And that probably still wouldn't fucking do it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So yeah. it's like th I don't think these things ruin the music industry. I think they they uh, they show artists a side of user behavior they're not used to seeing. Mm. Because I think well, especially a lot of newer artists are gonna have to understand is that like you are a part of a cultural phenom that's not gonna be understood for another like five to ten years. You know what I'm saying? Saying we we, we can look back on that's the real. ringtone shit that's and the mixtape shit and dissect it and break down why that shit work, bro, nobody's gonna understand now for like another five to 10 years, right? So it's like, you're a part of it. So you are going to see things and be a part of things that on paper do not make sense to you. You know what I'm saying? Because nothing has ever come along to like really show this in that, that type of way before. So I feel like, like you said, bro, they had the show. They probably bought merch, Money. you know what I'm saying? They probably, Money. they probably went home and talked about how great of a time they had. Maybe even listen to the rest of your catalog. Maybe that was an eye-opening moment for all of them. They all went like, damn, I should go listen to the rest of this, the rest of this <laughs> song and figure <laughs> out the words for it. Go, oh, like, oh, man, I don't know what come after that <laughs> shit. But it's like, bro, you you won at least for what most artists are looking for. Mm -hmm. They came to the show, they, they knew the song enough to come to the show, spend some money. Now, it's up to you as an artist to, I think, keep them interested enough that they care to learn the rest of the song, the rest of the catalog. That's the part right like there, bro. Yeah. Because this is your job, right? Yeah. At the end of the day, we gotta remember, this is your job. So yes, it would be nice if the fans listen to everything, but one day they're at your show. We keep repeating that part back because it's so hard to get people to your show. Yeah. And that's money that you're getting exchanged for that relationship. So yeah. one, it's your job for the music to be good enough that people want to listen to more of it. Cause let's be real, some of these songs, that part is Might the part. It. Yeah, that's it. It ain't <laughs> nothing else. <laughs> like, so you don't deserve for them to listen to the whole thing. I don't feel that way about Steve shit. I really, really fuck with that last project. But 
Like, still, they are at the show. It's yeah. your job to put on a hell of a performance so people, like, just rock with you in the future and they follow your next thing. Yeah. That experience was so great. So I want to come to them um, to this next show. I want to go listen to the rest of the project, like, give them an experience or perform that song so good, and now they want to go listen to it, in a, you know, in their own room, and now they're associating with that moment. So if you can, like, just stay humble with it. Yeah. And keep putting in that work. You understand? Matter of fact, Gary V does this. He, he's always good at getting ahead of this stuff, stuff and playing that game. Like you ever seen Gary V when Gary V was already Gary V to you, right? Yeah, he'll yeah. go into a room and he was like, I know half the room doesn't know me. Like who doesn't know me up here? Yeah. Right? And he'll see, oh yeah, I'm glad. I love that shit. You know Gary, right? You yeah. know? <laughs> and be like, all right. And then my job is to like, you know, basically. When you make, over. Yeah, when you yeah. over, right? I know I seem like a sales, uh, a, 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 a snake oil salesman, da, 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 right? But this is my job to keep staying consistent. You might not even like me now, but eventually you see this stuff play out and, and yeah. say Gary's a dope individual. And he's already got millions of followers, right? That's the mentality that an artist really has to yeah. has to go at it with, right? That's kind of why Kanye still, like he, <laughs> I think it comes from a slightly more insecure place, but that's why he goes like so hard still, where I think he's aware of the lack of awareness of him. Like yeah. he has this thing where he wants to dominate and continue to make people acknowledge him in the way that he wants to be acknowledged, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, better or worse, to see, you know, that's a whole nother conversation I ain't trying to have today. <laughs> but the fact is, the impact is the same. You continue to get known, continue to get talked about, and the growth continues to happen. Yeah, and, I, and two, to like the point you made, I think about, there's different types of people that, that come to these shows, right? So you have your, right. your diehard fans, which is, it's not like it wasn't anybody in the crowd not singing the words, right? They, they, they were drowned out by the people that didn't know. So you have your fans, they were drowned out by silence, bro. <laughs> well, I mean, people were still singing. They just were singing nah, the hook. Nah, you know what I'm saying? Like, but, you. <laughs> like, you got the fans. You got maybe a pseudo fan. Like, I know the song enough, so maybe I want to go. And then you got the people that probably don't really know who you are. Their friend probably brought them. Maybe right. they've kind of heard of you before. Right. Maybe it was like walking past the venue and saw the line outside. I was like, oh, this is pretty crazy. Well, probably not see like His tickets are probably sold out. But, you know. Yeah. But you have these different groups, and I think, like, I don't know, one thing I wish I would have saw him do in that clip, and maybe it did happen, but I feel like he should have stopped the crowd and been like, he should have acknowledged it, bro. He should have been like, yo, like, I see everybody in the room doesn't know all the words, so look, I'm about to teach it to y'all real quick, and then we're gonna start this shit back from the top. See, that's, that that's that next level performance. Performance skills, yeah. 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 Crazy, bro, like, to flip the, flip the moment. So I wish he would have did that. But I mean, he's not out here like ranting about it. So I mean, he's handling it well. You know what I'm saying? He's yeah, because yeah. that was his fan page. I, I thought that was him at yeah. first, but that's like his fan page. Yeah. But hey, you know, like on the other side, going back to the beginning of the pod, man, we could have could have made this a way bigger viral moment. Y'all should be yeah. pushing that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's true. Like, that could be that's a whole true. thing, and that could start an industry conversation. And people, you know, like I could see that being pushed and, and having its own organic effect. Yeah. Period. And right. I was kind of having a moment on Twitter. That's what I saw at first. Well, I, said, I think I dropped it. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was the link. The link, yeah. It's bro. not viral enough, yeah. though. <laughs> he got to give it the attention. That's all. Yeah. yeah. It's not, or his team needs to like drop it on some meme pages. Yeah. That could become a legit conversation. Again, is TikTok ruining music, but centered around his shit, he still gets the attention. So, um, you know, look, th this TikTok thing, I, I get that it's his own beast. And <laughs> it brings, like Ja'Cory said, or I think that was a really good point. This is a moment that no one understands right now. People probably aren't going to understand it for a good four or five years. So just know that this is the time that you're in. Yeah, it's like you can't really make any wrong moves because there's no, there's no wrong moves. Exactly. You know I mean, well, that's, that's not true, but you, you can only make so many wrong moves. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then going back, yeah. bro, it's, it's the long game, bro. It's like these fans going to grow up. You give them a good show, a good experience, a good performance. They're going to stick around, man. They'll learn the words eventually. And then, you know, going back to what I was saying about Coyle Ray, unless you plan on quitting anytime soon, then you're going to be good, bro. They'll know the words of the next show. That's Facts. all that matters. Facts. <laughs>